All right, so we are starting this webinar and I have with me a Moog Joshi from Advanced Agility. And today we'll be talking about why scaling is harder than we think it is. Hi, Moog. Hello, bro. How are you? Really good, really good. Uh, we still have people joining, so yeah, let's wait and see how it goes. Yeah, it has been five minutes, so let's start. Um, so we are five minutes into the webinar. So let's start for the people who are already in. <clears throat> yep. So I think um, for all these people who have joined, I know people are still joining, <clears throat> but the people who have already joined, I just want to say to them that this is a very different kind of webinar session. I know you must be bored out of all these long one hour presentation. So we are not going to present anything. It's more like a conversation uh, which me and Amok would be having around our thoughts, our practical thoughts, day-to-day -day challenges. So there's no script. We are not prepared to say something. It's a very real-time practical conversation between two people who are into the world of agile transformation. So let's see how it goes. Even we don't know how it will go. <laughs> very exciting. <clears throat> Good, interesting. So the topic is very, very interesting that uh, people don't even know about scaling. The word do scaling means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as a layman uh, term that, okay, Gaurav, when you, when you talk about scaling, do you relate it only to your industry or what do you think about the word scaling itself? I think that's a, that's a very practical question you're asking. And <clears throat> this is the question I ask myself as well every single day, and it's been so many years. Here is my here is my answer of today's understanding of scaling. And then let me know your thoughts as well. Sorry, a bit of bad thought. So imagine, Amog, that you have decided to do something as an individual contributor, anything, whether it's about uh, going to your backyard and doing some gardening, or it's about building a website, or it's about maybe going to the moon, I don't know, anything. If you are the only one involved in taking the decision and doing the execution, then everything starts with a thought, with an idea that appears in your brain, and then that converts into action. The only resistance to that is your procrastination or your motivation or your lack of motivation. So the delay is very less. The moment you throw in somebody else like me in this mix, now if you want to do something with me, you can't just think and assume that I will do the same thing. You have to explain to me. And that has some cost. And that will cause some delay. The moment we'll add a third person like John, one of our attendees, uh, if we include the John as well, sorry, John, to include you without asking you, then it's even more complicated. We have all three of us has to be in sync, aligned to the same path. It doesn't matter what we are saying, but at the same time, all three of us are thinking and shifting our baseline from one place to another. And that caused more and more delay. Without going into too much of detail, just from three, let's say we are suddenly 300. <clears throat> and that is the scaling. How you can convert an idea to execution model from a single person to 300, 400, 1000, 10,000. That's all. That's the idea about scaling. Something that can sustainably run survive and grow with lot of people, a bigger group at the same time. That's how I see it. Yeah, that, that is interesting. Hmm. So my first question is, so we are clear about what is scaling and mm -hmm. scaling means then more than one person getting involved in any kind of work that we are doing. Yep. So let's say uh, we want to scale a business or we want to scale a product. Yep. And multiple teams are working on that product. What are the top three principles you would like to suggest for people uh, who are experiencing uh, increment in their team members, increment in their teams while they are experiencing slowly? What are the patterns or top three principles that you will suggest to them? They should take care when this mm -hmm. uh, change is going on. Yeah. Before I jump into that, why not you share your idea about scalability as well? Because we are just having a free flow conversation. 
I think audience would like to understand your perspective as well. So I'll to put you on the spot there. No, no, that's fine. So my uh, idea about scaling is uh, the first idea about my scaling or the first principle when we I talk about scaling is do not scale <laughs> itself. So uh, <laughs> first principle of scaling is do not scale. Yeah, and try to stay lean. That that's my thought process. But yes, what is scaling? Uh, scaling. Uh, can be in in thought through in any kind of industry for example if you have uh, started a grocery store okay so scaling in scaling from that perspective can be that you are increasing the size of that particular grocery store mm. earlier you were selling 5 skus now you are selling 10 skus then mm. you start 50 then yep. 25 yep. but you are still one grocery store mm. then the other part of scaling is that you you are of same size you are still selling 10 sqs of the product but then you started selling that in a different city now or in in a neighborhood and then mm. you have multiple you you have repeated that pattern multiple places mm. so that is another part of the scaling as well yeah? Yeah. the third part of scaling to me is for example now <laughs> you are investing in nvidia microsoft or advanced agility stocks and you are investing only 10 rupees right now or 10 dollars right now or 10 pounds 10 100000 pounds yeah 200000 pounds mm mm-hmm. so you are so it is not not that okay you are not there not many people but you are you are still a single person but you are scaling your investment to nth level mm so it can have multiple perspective but again irrespective of uh, the kind of scaling that is being done there is a change that that has to happen and mm. with that change we need to adopt different practices mm-hmm. different principles i think that's a very brilliant and profound thought um, that scaling can be of different type as well that remind me of a conversation i was hearing in in one of the podcasts long back um and this guy was talking about ai um for our audience we are sl- i'm slightly going off the track but that will help you understand the idea of uh, s- scaling or scalability the way i explained that adding more variable people parameter and amog has taken to the next level talking about the various dimension of it there was a guy who was saying in a podcast that we have learned how to be a good human already but we haven't learned how to be a good human at scale we have learned what is a good medical care but we have not learned what is a good medical care at scale we have learned how to save the planet individually but we haven't learned how to save the planet at scale so this whole idea of scalability is not just limited to it or software or hr or this or that the original question which you are asking mog is is goes beyond the corporate world is 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 go to the point where it's about survival of human being on this planet on a scale yeah, level how to interesting yeah so there are so many perspective of scaling itself yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so next time when you guys are talking about scalability or scaling the agile don't limit yourself to a framework or certain buzzwords or you know uh, what do you call there's a lim- there's a word for that the words which are popular in current times what do you call them Buzzwords, buzzword, buzzword. Yeah. So I don't just go for that. Understand the concept of it. You are scaling something to achieve bigger result, involve more resources, more people, bigger horizon, bigger scale, lot more money. Yeah. So positive and negative, it will be more. That's, yeah, that's great. So hmm. coming back to our uh, previous question. Yeah. So now yeah. when we are experiencing uh, growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I feel growth is synonymous to scaling. So when you're experiencing growth, what are the things you should take care? Mm-hmm. And again, one more perspective that I would like to add here. So it is just not uh, when we say growth, it can be a little bit different from scaling in a way that my growth is like today. Uh, earlier, I was a software developer. I became a Scrum master, product owner, agile coach, and then uh, enterprise agile coach. So my, I'm growing. so that is again a change the mm. level of work uh, that i'm doing uh, it's scaling as well so 
with every change which is to grow which is to multiply what are the basic principles that we should be careful about when we are scaling so give me the top 3 that you can think of so i don't want, i want to purposefully stay away from the word principle in this conversation because we are going very free flow but i can just share when we are talking about scaling and growth few things that you should be mindful of from my perspective and my experience and i'm sure you will add lot more into that i think the moment we talk about growth that means um we have already achieved something we 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 may be at the first ladder and now we are on the second ladder or third ladder then only we can say we have grown and that growth can be in terms of money number of people bigger market share or whatever so one of the thing that immediately comes or kicks in the moment you grow is the fear of losing that place even if you like or don't like so the moment this idea of fear of losing that place and falling back to the previous place is scary is is not easy for any team for any organization and that brings the pressure and that pressure can impact your performance in a negative way that you end up falling down even if you don't even if you are aware of that so the point i'm trying to make is the moment you talk about growth and when you scale up and you grow you need to bring in the processes and practices which are sustainable you can't just keep on putting more and more and more inside your your um your pursuit to grow you will burn out whether it's amount of hours you are putting in whether it's amount of checkpoints milestone approval gates um budget everything when you scaling up bring in the sustainability that's so important that is the first thing that always comes in mind second thing is like um scalability and growth because you use the word has an underlying mechanism of speed inside it because you are breaking the inertia because you were at level 0 then you went to level 1 and level 2 that means you have certain momentum as a group as a team um although it can mean anything but i'm referring to the team for now is so important that you have control on your direction because now you are in momentum you are in speed and if you lose track of your direction you might end up banging into a tree or a wall or a dead end or maybe a uh at a dangerous place so basically what i'm saying is be very clear about your vision because you are in momentum you are a group of people trying to do to something together don't let it just spread into all the different direction and just burning you out or just losing the intensity of your your momentum that is also very important so having sustainability having the control in one direction these two things are are very important for me there are lots of different technical things as well but i think these are the fundamental which i would like to share yeah, yeah that's interesting so <clears throat> what is your so my perspective this? yeah one thing is uh, what what i understand when we talk about scaling is that we are transforming when we are scaling we are transforming when we are transforming is it, is it always like when you scale up do you really transform all the time or yeah, that, that that's what i believe that when you are scaling you are transforming okay okay and that's what the uh, underlying principle i wanted to speak about is that when you are scaling you are transforming what does it mean it means you are changing you You're are changing. no longer what you were earlier exactly that's a very so profound thing so we have to let go of what we were we can't gain anything without losing something mm. so we have to lose our current state we have to lose ourselves to be someone else right mm. that's, that's what it is it is the basic understanding that i feel that when organization change when people are uh, people want to improve or they want to scale up they try to clinch to what they were already doing what they are already are yeah. mm. so that is the first principle that or the factor that i want to say that it is change yeah mm -hmm. and you have to let go things let go yourself to be some someone else a better of yourself that is the first part and in, and before you go to next one interestingly it, it matches very well with what i was trying to explain earlier that there is a fear that will come that you will fall back 
because yeah. if you are not letting go of your old self, the chances of you falling back to where you started from are much higher. Yeah. But if you let go and if you change yourself from inside out, then the chances of you just keep on moving in the right direction is higher. So that's yeah. that's very interesting that it, it comes yeah. together nicely. Yeah. And the second thought, uh, which will also come along with what you say, uh, the second part was about having the vision. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, having the vision is, is great, right? But we should have business agility. We should have agility into that business as well. Because mm. as you said that now speed is the key in this digital age. Mm. So yes, you have a vision, but it needs to be inspected way frequently. And we should be ready to adopt to uh, a new vision as soon as we think that, okay, mm. we, we are just inspecting, adapting, inspecting, adapting, and going uh, forward. It is not that, okay, we had one target and we have to achieve that. So yes, it is there, but if you are just focused on that particular thing, let's say this is the point and you want to achieve it and you are moving towards it, then maybe this point is the not right point now uh, after you start moving and this point is the right point. So you should constantly inspect when you're, when you're scaling, we should constantly inspect because mm. if we are choosing a direction, the world is changing at such a fast pace that we have to constantly see uh, how do we inspect and adapt our vision as, as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the thing, one of the very critical thing that I, I would suggest uh, that that is my second principle is identifying patterns. Yeah, and you will see this world is full of patterns. So identifying patterns is what I see that how this pattern has been successful. How can we adapt it to mm -hmm. optimize this pattern further? So that mm -hmm. is my. That's that's really brilliant. When you were talking about this um, idea of inspecting and adapting and continuously monitoring your vision, that reminds me of the story of Slack. So Slack is, is a very popular chatting system. I think most of the people who are listening this webinar right now, they know that it's a very popular. Maybe you are using it as well. If you're using it, please put into chat window that you are using it. Um, so yeah, coming back to Slack, they started as a gaming company. It's so profound to know that they started as a gaming company and they wanted to have a chat system which they can use to talk to each other in the company. And uh -huh. then they realize that, wow, we have built something is so amazing that we can help somebody else outside the company as well. And look at Slack now. No way they're talking about that they are a gaming company. Oh, I, I didn't even knew that. It's such a <laughs> mind-blowing way of a mind-blowing example of pivoting and yeah. just changing your course for good, not for not because you are confused or uh, you quit. It's because you are sensing the market, you are exploring your own strength, you are letting, you believe in letting go, you are changing and transforming and achieving something bigger and better. Yeah. So, but I just wanted to be mindful. But we are not saying that, or I'm not saying that. Okay. Today, I want to develop an Android app and then next week, I want to develop an uh, iPhone. <laughs> yeah. That frequent change, uh, that's what we are not advocating, I think, Gaurav. Yeah, yeah exactly, uh, the, exactly. The idea is to inspect and adapt at the right time with, with the right responsible moments. Uh, yeah. Too frequent changes is also not uh, a, a good example uh, of uh, scaling Absolutely. as well, that it will distort you. Yeah, I, I read somewhere long back that... Um, there's a difference between being curious and being committed. So if somebody is being committed, they are heading into one direction. Mm -hmm. They're continuously sensing the inner and internal and external parameters and then making change as required, but still heading in one direction. So uh, the example of Slack fits very well into that. But then what you are saying is, is about being curious. So today I'm exploring Android. Um, and the moment I get stuck into a smaller problem, and I'm saying, oh, it doesn't work. Let me go to iPhone and start building the iOS app. So that's like just being curious and going all the places without going in one direction. So yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. Yeah, Even that's me... true. Sorry, go on. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I just want to iterate as well. Long back when I was a student, I read uh, Swami Vivekananda's uh, one, one 
chapter of a book. I, I could not read the entire book. But in this one of the paragraph I still remember is that at a certain point of time, there is a, uh, in the sea, uh, there is a, uh, there is a snail who gets the water drop and then they go deep into the sea and then they work on it and then the pearls come out of it. So it, it's like you keep doing uh, what you need to do yeah. Yeah, uh, and stop doing new things uh, again and again. Yeah. So that's what Gaurav, you explained very well that there's, there's a difference between being curious and being committed. Uh, you are committed to achieve something and to achieve that you you are changing and you are ensuring that that something is also very important and that is what you are adopting your way as well but uh, it doesn't mean that you you are in our way we say that okay stop starting and start finishing things uh, that is very very well said but at the same time we also say that do not consider sunk cost that if you know that something you have started is is not going to take you where you want to leave, then you have mm. to stop it as well. Absolutely. So it is not one thing that fits in. It is like we have to constantly understand which principle to use when. Exactly. Yeah. And, and by the way, if you are feeling or thinking that why we are not talking about safe jargons, um, the simple answer is because there are lots of places you can read about them or listen to them. We want you to do something different, unique, uh, something which is more core and internal to, uh, to all these concepts and practices. Uh, you must have heard a lot. Uh, it's all about mindset. But how the mindset works, nobody generally talks about it in depth. So we are kind of somewhere deep inside your brain right now, talking about more of the psychological aspect of scaling. And that brings us to this whole idea that why scaling is hard. This is why the scaling is hard because we generally don't tap into this deep wisdom inside our mind. We just want to do, we just want to follow a checklist, step one, step two, step three, and that's invariably will fail. And then the people will say, Scrum doesn't work or Save doesn't work or Kanban doesn't work. Or you go to LinkedIn, it's full of hate. People are saying, stop using story point, stop doing this WSJF and whatnot. So we, we are not talking about all that. What we're talking about it, whatever you choose, just make sure your mindset is right. Isn't it a move? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. In a way, the other perspective is the framework does help. Of course, it does, so, yes. Safe, skilled real framework. Dean Leffingwell, sir, has done a lot of effort in bringing so many practices, principles together. And it is a great, great reference point. So people in software, hardware, Communication in any industry, if you are growing at a speed, Scaled Agile Framework gives a great insight and reference point to help you uh, to find information, knowledge, patterns at one place. I was talking about patterns. That's what they uh, we have in SAFE as well. But again, yeah. mm -hmm. let me ask you another perspective of scaling. Okay. Uh, by the way, you have one question which I couldn't answer, so we'll come back to that. But yeah, please go on. Yeah, yeah. So when when you are when you are experiencing the the scaling, uh, yeah, then at what point uh, you should think that okay, uh, I need to stop, and I need to see that, for example. Uh, the, the example will give a better perspective to my question. For example, if I am I am having a grocery store, the first example that I gave. And now earlier I was sending uh, five SQs, then I started uh, selling 10, then 20, then 40, and I, yeah. it is growing. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. At what point of time we should understand that, okay, now it can't be scaled anymore. And I, now I need to replicate that. Yeah. So scaling, is there a limit to scaling? Is there a limit beyond which we should uh, start another form of scaling from one form? One form was that, okay, you are just growing and then now you can't grow. Now let, let's start replicating now. So at what stage you should think that now we should start replicating instead <laughs> of growing? I think it's a very, very powerful question 
and because we are now in this session we are more focusing on the mindset so i'll give my another weird example so i think scaling of anything depends on the underlying horizon or underlying land or space what in a in a pure symbolic way i'm saying like as like a human race the moment we realize we cannot scale beyond the size of the earth we start talking about going to mars we haven't talked about this for millions of years so i think the similar kind of mindset has to be there if you are um, a firm or an organization selling a product in europe and you want to scale beyond europe you will do that when you will either find europe being risky or you will find that you have penetrated enough into the european market when you have reached the full potential slash exploitation slash leverage slash usage of your horizon your playground then it's time to replicate then it's time to create a twin a different model or venture into something else when you have exploited the mother earth enough it's time to either get obsolete or go to mars <laughs> that's what i would say what would you say on this yeah yeah that's that's a very very scared example i would say that you you <laughs> uh yeah so i would like to refer back that um, from my perspective it is like manage how how much you can manage yeah? mm. Mm. Uh, with one particular factor mm. yeah? so it is manageability basically mm. and that's what we talk about that when if you are working alone okay uh, is a single person right so then you can do work very efficiently as you explained at, at the earlier as well mm. when you get married and when you have a spouse or a partner then you have to you have to consider them as well that okay now you have to consider when we are talking to them and uh, when i'm teaching lean portfolio management i give that example that if you want to buy a shoes you won't need to consider them but if you want to buy a car then you need to that is beyond the threshold you need to consider their viewpoint as well hmm. but now when you are kids now <laughs> you need to consider them as well yeah so uh, it, it is similar to the family like if you say uh, how big a family should be like okay family should be maybe four or five people together and that's what i think is the size of the team as well when we are scaling that if you have if you want to bring a team size it is like five ish is a good team size where you, you can do whatever the value you can deliver now okay that that's for a family but uh, that is not enough right we, we we want to be an entire community and then depending on uh, for example if i say how many people you might have visited god this, this is a question to you how many people uh, would have called you or you, you have, would have spoken in last 3 months at max 300 yeah so that 300 yeah so more than 300 if you can't manage those kind of contacts if yeah so out of mind is out of sight uh, and that's where we think that okay this is the way you can think okay beyond this it can go unmanageable so now we start splitting it mm. as well so similarly in uh, in the families as well when the kids grow when they get married and then they see okay now it's difficult to stay with the grandparents and all we try to split into another family as well mm -hmm. so and i know some families uh, like they like 20 people they live together because they are able to manage it so it is all about manageability it is all about Uh, that with that growth additional member that you are growing whether that is slowing you down or that is helping to speed up so finally the conclusive principle that i understand is that whenever you add whenever you grow you see the another growth factor that you added is helping you to speed up or slow down mm. yeah so after a certain point of time if you think okay they we have keep adding adding it has started slowing us down then now it's time to replicate yeah that's what mm -hmm. the factor i think mm -hmm. so i think um, again it's very interesting to see that what i was thinking and what you have explained is quite close and i think it's so close because we are anyway talking about mindset thing yeah uh, which is the core the real core of 
this whole thing going on right now. So basically what we're saying, your need for scaling, whether to scale or not, or when to stop anything around scaling and just start something brand new or stop scaling and stay there depends on your your horizon, your limits, and your ROIs as well. Check these parameters and then accordingly take call. That's what we are saying literally. If you your scaling need more money to be invested, but the returns are not enough, stop scaling. If there is an external limitation uh, that you can't scale, of course you can't scale at that time and then you have to do something else. You're giving the example of family and kids in some countries is not allowed to have more than two. So you can't scale up. <laughs> so either you stop or you get married again. <laughs> so that's what I can say. <clears throat> but it's interesting how how closely these real life example and mental thinking patterns can help anybody who is actually trying to work in the scaling of agile or transformation in organization in the corporate life as well. Isn't it so great to see that? Yeah, so I think the multiple frameworks, for example, a scaled agile framework, okay, uh, their number of teams have come from squads, army squads. Okay? Robin Dunbar, uh, the number mm, of people yeah. in the train has come from the historical uh, number of people in the villages. And after mm. that, they used to split into multiple villages and the mm. neurocortical size of our, our, our DNA as well. So mm. I, I think, uh, it, again, I was talking to patterns. Yeah. Uh, another pattern that that I remember uh, is swarming. That when you when you're scaling, can you swarm? Yeah. If you can't swarm to a position that okay, like if you are thousand people, they start swarming to a single problem, then then uh, it is a nightmare and it will slow you down. So mm -hmm. another another pattern I see is when you are swarming and it helps in swarming. It means that group is big enough. Yeah, uh, but it, if you start slowing you down when you're swarming, then it means, okay, for example, if five people are working on a problem, they can solve it. But if 20 people are working on the same problem, small problem, then uh, everyone might have their own views and they may distract more than contribute. So it is better to form five teams and focus on uh, a subset of a problem and then conquer and divide and conquer that problem then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So you were asking this question earlier. What was the question I forget about? What a team, have we talked about that in detail? Like what a team should focus on when they are scaling up? What was the question? Remind me again. Yeah, I don't even remember that. <laughs> we, have, we have gone into much more deeper and more scary concepts. So we completely forget about that. Yeah, but I, I have another question for you when about, about scaling. Okay. So tell me something about leadership. So when a leadership, when a leader is trying to scale up, okay. Now, what, what is the strategy that leader, what, what are the few things that the leader should take care of when they are driving the scaling? You mean to say they are trying to help their team scale up or yeah. they are part of a bigger scaling effort where they are just involved what exactly let's, say, let's, let's try to boil down like i am i am the transformation leader mm. so my it is i am the director of the transformation of your organization mm. so me as a transformation leader uh, what are the few things that i should take care uh, when i am doing the transformation so uh, let's go back to your original point Transformation is change on steroids. The mm. change is happening so fast that you can't just call it change. It's beyond that. So that means the traditional change management methods won't work. That's for sure. Many transformation leaders, they think transformation is a kind of change. And I can still apply the old traditional time-tested change management method. They, it, they won't work. They might work for a while, or you can put them very nicely in a vanity, vanity matrix but that won't help you doing the transformation. Or even if you transform, you may not be on the track in the right direction. You might be lost somewhere. 
so that's what they should not do but then what should they do i think the answer is in the question itself the transformations uh, any kind of transformations happens from inside it's very difficult to transform a, what do you call it a larva into a butterfly yeah. from the external you can just give the environment from the outside and let the transform happen from inside uh, so i will connect it with the idea of servant leadership as a transformation lead you need to have absolute amazing in depth knowledge of the process and still not to try and exercise your authority like a like a boss like a commander some people take it other way some people think oh servant leadership that means i not i don't need to do anything that means even if i don't know i can get away by saying you do it no you need to have the in depth knowledge because that will help you provide absolute brilliant clarity to your team and then tell them the direction as well and let the team transform themselves but how the team will transform themselves until you will give them the right environment so all the effort all the thing we are doing is basically just trying to create the environment and i think what scrum safe kanban we people talk about the processes and right or wrong these things these framework are just providing the right uh, favorable environment so that each member of the team can flourish each member can transform themselves and so that together the whole team can transform themselves i can talk a bit more about it but that's a primary thought i would like to uh, stop here and pick up your view i think before before you pick up my view i just want to and and that's what my answer or my view will be what what do you think is the definition of transformation as i said for me transformation is um a change happening so fast that it completely make you something else yeah which you were not earlier which you can't even identify yeah and that's that's where I, my my thought process come in my definition of transformation mm-hmm. can also be the transformation is a series of transitions yeah it is yeah? it is actually so yes it is not like you you if you want to just transform like you might get distorted but yeah. that and that's what my thought process about a leader who has the responsibility of transformation as well mm. that think about whether you want to transform immediately or you want to transition 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 and so and after some time you will see it, the real transformation yep yep but so some a... people want to say okay 3 months 1 year i want to transform yeah so there is a i i there is no wrong or right decision as per me but there are pros and cons yep. so for me leaders have to think that what do they want they want to continuously improve transition slowly uh, by slowly i don't mean that okay uh, at a speed of a snail means uh, transitioning so that it does not impact you so badly that you are demotivated you are broken and you are losing more than you are gaining so take transition approach to transformation okay that is what i believe sometime is very very important and i think again um, you have said something which reminds me of the moment you said about transition so this transition sometime happening very silently as well yeah you can't put them on a checklist as a milestone i think anybody who is listening right now and who is experienced in the traditional project management they might map to transition to the milestone here is my first transition point here is my second transition point it may not be like it may not be visible and that reminds me of another example among um everyone knows and everyone says that in science that humans were monkeys yeah. so we became human from monkeys that is a so gorilla we, <laughs> gorillas so we have we have uh, transformed from the one kind of species to another kind of species but nobody knows that exact point where they can say just before this point we were not humans and after this point we were human nobody has that point in the science the transition is so slow going back to your point that you will never have that switch like monkey now turn into humans that doesn't exist same way the the transformation you can't say that here's a point where our organization was operating in the previous world and here's a point now we are operating in a modern new world it doesn't exist it will happen so slowly 
the change is so discrete that you will not be able to spot where exactly you have changed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Oh, it's, it's almost the time. So uh, I was so enjoying the talk with you that I could not even uh, understand that it is almost 45 minutes and we have been talking. So any last thought before we leave for the day today? I think one thing I would like to say that, um, yeah, learn about the framework, learn about the concept, uh, whatever you are doing in the in your role, whether you are in IT or HR or finance. But it's important to focus on the mindset as well. Um, anybody who is who has joined specifically for understanding the scaling of Agile, <clears throat> especially using the framework like SAFE, I want to say that the best way, if you're an experienced person, the best way to learn that is joining a program like implementing SAFE. And while Amog is here, I would like to, um, you know it, many of you, but I would like to highlight that Amog is uh, an SPCT. That means he is one of the best person you can get in the world to teach you about scaling agile using the safe framework approach. And that approach is something that will make it slightly easier for you. And I, I can tell you, it's not about just saying something in, in a biased view. If you don't have the right mindset, even safe can fail. So there's no guarantee scheme here. No short, short scheme here, we are saying. What we are saying is that if you have the right mindset, you understand the fundamentals and the concept, then having a framework like SAFE and your in-depth knowledge of SAFE can make your life so easy, can reduce the friction down and make your speed faster, make your transformation at the scale level, not for you as an individual. So great. And I think as a leader, you can help others as well in your organization. So what is that class, Amog, maybe you would like to share with any, everyone? What is the best program, someone who is leading the transformation, very experienced in management, in corporate world, but now take it to the next level. Uh, you run a program which is very popular and I think called the gold standard. Tell us a bit about that. Yes, so Scaled Agile Framework have um, the most popular class, which is implementing SAFE uh, for change agents. So if you're looking for uh, changing the ways of working and implementing a scaling framework. For example, if you have started moving from 20, 30 to 50, 60, 70, more people working to deliver a single solution, uh, it might be important that you learn those patterns which are helpful. With mm -hmm. Scale Agile Framework, the substance is anonymous. You've got so many things which are there for you to guide, to learn, which can help you to do that. And the class that Gaurav mentioned is implementing SAFE. Uh, and implementing SAFE is how do you implement SAFE? It is a four-day class, uh, eight hours, nine hours each day, eight to nine hours each day, uh, dedicated. And only SPCT and SPCT candidate like Gaurav are eligible to train that. And there are hardly 150 of uh, those people around the world who are active in uh, doing these classes and uh, teaching how to implement safe in a implementing safe class. So advanced agility is one of the safe gold partner and uh, they conduct uh, these classes uh, once in a month, uh, or sometimes once in two months as well. So grab your opportunities uh, whenever you have. Try to contact on our website advancedagility.com and or you can reach to Gaurav and me directly as well if you are interested uh, not only just for class but uh, to understand for anything, yeah. patterns or yes uh, anything that you want to know about scaling yeah i can see there are how many there are around eight or nine questions as well in the chat window but i'm sorry we cannot answer those straight away because we are running out of time what we'll do is uh, we'll we'll answer you these questions from our team you will get an email and that should help you. But if you didn't get the right answer and you want to know more, please send an email to the team and we are more than happy to come again and have this kind of conversation. Sure. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. Take care. Thank you, Amog. It was a really amazing conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.